Simeon checks in. He'll join us with Stan for Steve. Talk a little bit of betting lines, if you will. Fellas, and Steve, you're up first, if you will, and we'll start with BYU, who heads to Eugene to take on the Ducks. The Cougars ranked higher in the AP poll, but it's Oregon who's favored by three and a half points. Yeah, that might scare some people here with, with Oregon being favored and BYU fresh off that win over top-ranked Baylor. But when I look at this matchup, I'm still not sold that Oregon's offense is fixed after they scored 70 points against Eastern Washington last week. And on the other side, BYU looks like it's going to be again. They're out with they're down. They don't have their top two wide receivers. So I think it's more of a low scoring game. And I look at the under the total 58 points. And that's where I would lean towards in this game. All right, Doug, let's talk about Penn State. They head to the Plains to take on Auburn. Despite being on the road, Penn State favored by three. Yeah, really interesting game from a fan perspective, but pretty uneventful so far this week from a betting perspective. It hasn't been any respected money on this game. The line is three, has stayed three all week. FBI has four for that. what that matters. Typically, you'd want to grab the points with an SEC team at home at Jordan-Hare Stadium catching a full three, but... Obviously, the Tigers have been in such disarray from the offseason. And T.J. Finley, I mean, transferred from LSU. He has one touchdown pass after facing Mercer and San Jose State, three interceptions. And then you think, oh, maybe he's running the ball. He only has seven carries, I believe. So a lot of question marks surrounding Auburn. So I lean Penn State if I had to play it. But not a lot of, mo a lot of, not a lot of people involved so far this week. Yeah, I think that would aptly be called a, a fair question mark, Doug. All right, let's talk about number 11, Michigan State. Uh, they head west to take on the Huskies. Washington favored by three and a half points at home. Stanford, Steve. Yeah, say that again. It doesn't happen much. An unranked team at home facing a top 11 team in Michigan State on the road. We know all the upsets Michigan State put up last year, but now this is a true test, and it's a true test for Washington. New coaching staff coming in. You know, both teams played inferior competition the first two weeks. Both are averaging over 43 points a game, and both are, you know, giving up minimal points. So what gives here? Is it an offensive game? Is it a defensive game? I think UW has the, has the goods behind, behind Penix and his new coach DeBoer as they re, re, you know, get together again from their days in Indiana. So I look at Washington here. Somebody knows more than me because they're giving points to a ranked team. I'll take Washington. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. It's almost as if they know something we don't. Go figure. Uh, let's talk about Alabama for just a minute. The Crimson Tide, of course, coming off that win, that narrow win over Texas. They host a Louisiana Monroe after, uh, after I mentioned just getting past Texas. 40 and a, 48 and a half points favorites in Tuscaloosa, Doug. That's a lot of points. It really is. And if you want to get into the weeds like I do and sort of nerd out on this odds making stuff, I actually think there's betting value on Alabama more than any other team in these types of situations. When games are lined, over 35 points. This is when Alabama actually has betting value, and it's not laying the near seven touchdowns. It's in the first half. So since 2018, when Nick Saban implemented a spread offense with tempo for the first time in his career and had an elite quarterback, that was two of his first years as a starter, they were just blowing everyone out in the first half. They covered 10 of those 12 games in the first half when the game line was 35. But the problem is for the game line, they were six and six. And you say, why is that? Well, no, there's no team that has a bigger drop-off between the first half and second half than Alabama, and it's because Saban is just overt with his sportsmanship. Vanilla play calling, re re reserves, and he's barely outscored those 12 opponents in the fourth quarter by a total of 16 points, so a little over one point per because he just wants to throw a bone to the opponent, let him save face a little bit, maybe get on the scoreboard. So the real kind of betting line value is in the first half because odds makers don't put a first half line in a vacuum. They use it off the game line. Well, the game line uses this fourth quarter and, and, and gentlemanly Saban. So there's really actually an advantage in the first half because Bama has such a dominant and elite offense and defense that explodes the entire first half. Gentlemanly Saban. I like that <laughs> on a Thursday afternoon. Doug, I have to wonder, though, if it'll be the case against Louisiana Monroe. Let's not forget they upset Nick Saban's team in 2007. I will also add that the man has a very long memory. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.